test, and then I'll give you guys one to go ahead and do this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the problem that we have here is remember the common difference when we're looking at an arithmetic sequence. The common difference is between two consecutive terms, right? A1, A2, A2, A3, A3, A4. If we could find the difference between those consecutive terms, that was the difference, right? The problem that we have is we have two terms, but they're not consecutive. Can you put your knees on your desk, please? They're not consecutive terms, OK? So we can't just subtract these and determine what the common difference is. Now, there is some ways you know, we could obviously simply uh, you know, look into um, uh, dividing, using some division to be able to find the common difference. However, what if these terms are a little bit farther away? What I'm going to show you to do is to use the explicit formula to help you out. So if we have, if I have a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, all right? Now, basically what we always used this for was we always started with the first term, and we had whatever term we were trying to figure out was it was going to be represented by your n. Well, what we can now do is plug in these values. We're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in these values in for, um, in for my explicit formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a sub 5 equals a sub 3 plus 5 minus 1 times d. So please, note, please take a look at what I've done. I have now replaced, instead of whatever term I'm trying to find, I've replaced that with my, the larger term. And then instead of using a sub 1, I'm replacing that with a sub 3, because I don't know a sub 1. So I'm replacing that with a sub 3. And since n and n here, oops, I'm sorry. So what I've done is I've replaced all of a sub 1's and the 1 with a sub 3, 3 and 3. I replaced all n's with a sub 5 and 5. Now what this does is this allows me now I can replace what a sub 5 and what a sub 3 is. So that becomes 11 equals 5 plus 2d. Justin, could you just move a seat, please? Then what I'm simply going to do is solve. So I subtract 5, subtract 5. 6 equals 2d. Divide by 2, divide by 2. 3 equals d. As I mentioned, guys, you could have like subtracted those and divided by 2 before. Um, however, that I just want to go through using this process for you guys. So because this is something you guys can constantly go ahead and use. Justin, please go ahead and find a different seat. So in this case, you guys have the difference is equal to 3 right here. Now, if I know that the difference is equal to 3, I can use that to go ahead and find my a sub 1. So if I go back to my formula, if I determine that I want to figure out what a sub 1 is, and let's just use, I know, a sub 3. So I'd say a sub 3 is equal to a sub 1 plus 3 minus 1 times my difference, which is 3 a sub 3 equals, oops, a sub 3 is 5, equals a sub 1 plus 2 times 3. 5 equals a sub 1 plus 6, minus 6 minus 6, negative 1 equals a sub 1. And um, therefore, my explicit formula, so now that I know what a sub 1 is, now that I know what d is, my explicit formula is going to be a sub n equals a sub 1, which is negative 1, plus n minus 1 times 3, which is your d. And we can obviously simplify that formula as well. 